Well, in their continued campaign against free speech, it seems that the Florida branch of the Talmudic Jewish lobby is supporting a law that would essentially criminalize criticism of Judaism. And essentially what this law does, it lumps in acts of violence and terrorism, essentially, with criticism of any kind of aspect of their false blasphemous Babylonian Talmud or their false blasphemous idolatrous religion of, uh, sorry, their blasphemous idolatrous false religion of uh, Judaism, Talmudic Judaism. So, I mean, I mean, it just censorship of speech is something that the uh, Talmudic Jewish lobby uh, and also the Jesuit order that they serve are masters and professionals at. But this is an article on a dissident mag. It says, MAGA Republicans in Florida criminalize free speech in controversial new bill. And when it's referring to MAGA Republicans, or it's referring to these, this uh, Talmudic Jewish lobby within, you know, the kind of the Talmudic Jewish branch of that, uh, essentially that grouping. And they are trying to censor free speech says here in the article, Republican senators of Florida's House of Representatives, Mike Carso and Randy Fine, who is Jewish, have proposed a controversial new legislation that will criminalize certain forms of constitutionally protected speech as hate crimes. The new bill, HB 269, would make all of the following third class felonies. It says that any person distributing flyers involved in materials that have religious or, ec or ethnic aminus, or aminus, um, the, any person stalking, harassing, interfering with someone based on their religious or ethnic heritage, it will, it will be a third degree felony. Any person who willfully or maliciously defaces, injures, or damages a religious cemetery, or memorial, religious school, or community, or public or private property with a religious or ethnic, sorry, with religious or, or ethnic MS will now be committing a third degree felony. Any person who projects an image of religious or ethnic, you know, basically all the other stuff there, uh, indoors or outdoors without permission, written permission from the owner of the property will, commit, will be committing a third degree felony. And also if you interrupt, disrupt, or also disturb any religious school or religious service uh, with the purpose of essentially an anti-ethnic or religious sentiment, then you will be committing a third degree felon. The legislation appears to be in direct response to the vir uh, viral activism by National Socialist Florida and the GDL Golden Defense League speaking at the press conference announcing the bill co-sponsor Bill Mike sorry co-sponsor the bill Mike Corso asserted. Also I want to point something else out as well. Aside from the subtle attempt to try to make it seem like criticism of Judaism and lump you know it's like violence lumping it in with actual like physical acts. They're also it's a subtle attempt to also try to lump in all criticism in all critics of Judaism like myself in with full on neo Nazis and everything else and, and you know all this other stuff. It's a bunch of garbage. They, they, uh, it's a, it's a tactic that they like using to try to silence their critics. Just scream, oh, you're just a neo-Nazi, you know, fascist, whatever. It's how they censor and attack their critics. But this is what this co-sponsor of the bill says. I mean, and again, getting back to the thing of how lumping all criticism of Judaism as being somehow on par with Hitler-loving, you know, neo-Nazis. Says here, uh, is this is what he says. If we don't do something now, then we will soon. We will just. So we will just be 1933 Nazi Germany here all over again. 1933 Nazi Germany was the outcome of a fair and open election process in which the Nazi Party became the democratically elected winner of a statewide multi-party elections, which resulted in Adolf Hitler becoming Chancellor of Germany. As a result, Jews were uh, presiding over post World War II denazification banned all multi-party elections in Germany until 1990. Today, not much has changed without citing specific uh, verbiage. First Amendment. Uh, First Amendment to support his claim, uh, Jewish Florida State Rep. Randy Fine said, uh, we have a right to be an idiot in the United States. We have a right, we have a First Amendment. It doesn't mean you have the right to be an idiot and exercise the First Amendment. Uh, Carso, Carso, Caruso, whatever you say, it, went on to invest special, went, to, went on to invent special rights for Talmudic Jews that simply don't exist in the context of protected speech. Now I need to point something else out as too, the, something else out as well. Sorry, there is a kind of a pro, you know, neo-Nazi type slant in this article, so I don't endorse that uh, at all. However, that being said, they have the right to free speech. Okay, they have the right to express freedom of speech and free expression, and it's actually ironic because censorship of speech, which the Talmudic uh, Jewish lobby is pushing for, is exactly what Nazi Germany would have done to their critics and their, you know, uh, people they call their enemies. So I said before the Talmudic Jewish lobby is using the same kind of tactics that Hitler and the Nazis would use to silence freedom of speech. They are essentially just de facto neo-Nazis. But it says here in the article, uh, this is what uh, this guy said, 
They deserve to have the right towards quiet enjoyment in their communities and the ability to practice their Jewish faith without reprisal or without fear of harm. Such caviar and reckless statements made by lawmakers has been repeatedly rejected for decades in at least 6 million pages of, U of U.S. case law and contradicted by numerous public statements made by prominent political leaders declaring that the First Amendment does, in fact, give you the right to be an idiot. Yeah, I mean... Again, not agreeing with the pro-Nazi stance, but that is true. Free speech, the part of why it's so important is because exactly that. It protects speech that's unpopular. You see, uh, see, the thing about the timeline of Jewish lobby, I've exposed this before, they will cite free speech when it's something they agree with. When, for example, drawing cartoons of the false, you know, the blasphemous false prophet Muhammad. See, when someone does that, they'll cite, yeah, it's free speech. But um, if someone says something about Judaism or draws a cartoon about Judaism, then they all of a sudden become anti-free speech almost they start acting like woke liberals almost in terms of how they want censorship see it's only free speech if they agree with it and part that that's not free speech okay free speech is not just speech you agree with free speech is important and free expression is important because it protects open debate exchange of ideas and also protects stuff that's unpopular and stuff you don't like not stuff not just stuff you do like but that's something they don't understand and have a consistent record of it too in the early church as well with the early saints of god uh, they were trying to set, shut down their free speech as well. In, uh, for example, in Acts chapter 17, Acts chapter 13, Acts chapter 14, uh, Acts chapter 28, another example of that. Also, when Jesus Christ walked the earth in John 5, John 8, and you know John chapter 10, they tried to, the Talmudic the, uh, Jewish lobby of their day tried to shut down their speech as well because they criticized Judaism. So, I wanted to point that out. The Talmudic Jewish lobby has continually, time and time again, proved themselves to be the Nazi-like enemies of free speech that they've always been for almost 2,000 years. So, anyway, wanted to point that out. Don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.